Welcome back, Dark Souls fans, to Let's Die Horribly in Dark Souls 3. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333 for what is going to be basically the epilogue for this Let's Play, at least until the DLC. And let's see what happens when I pull this lever. I'm in Arch Dragon Peak with the bell. I guess I was right, it does cause the entire thing to vanish. Or does it? No. Or... No, I think actually it sounds like it does. Well, it's a good thing I skipped on... Oh. Okay. Well, we're still here. What the heck? Ow. Oh. All right, well, I guess I have to fight a dark spirit briefly. I'm surprised that actually hit me. Uh. Ah. I haven't gotten a lot of dueling practice in recently, so yeah. I guess that's an appropriate way to end it off, but yeah, I haven't really been I've actually because as is typical with let's players I've actually started a character off to the side who's entirely arranged I've no plans to record her by the way but it is just if I want to play more before the DLC without going to new game plus that character is entirely ranged so very different playstyle <laughs> so how do I get over there I mean, dropping off is... Oh. It's not death. Huh. King of the Storm. Apparently I missed an optional boss. Huh. All right. Ow. I'm gonna guess phase one is the dragon and phase two is the rider. That just makes sense to me. Whoa, what the heck? You're using lightning too, huh? Ow. Oh boy, there's no ground either. Ow. Breathing far down. Yep. Ah. Is that avoidable? Shoot. Ah. 
How do you like it, eh? Oh, I'm out of mana. Alright, that's phase one. And now I'm guessing the right are on their own. Dodge the oh, I guess dodge through. Shoot, I need protection on. <sighs> Would you give me a break? Yeah, I knew I was gonna die. I cannot do a boss the first time, ever. Right, well, as usual, death montage. Man, I was so close. I thought I was gonna be able to nail it the first time.
That was the worst boss in the game. And I've apparently fought all the bosses in the game now. So I can say, that was the worst boss. Abyss Watchers came close. Abyss Watchers had some annoying bits to them, annoying parts that were really hard to dodge through, but you could dodge through them. And Soul Cinder Dev, that one attack that you could not dodge the whole... Th I don't know if you could dodge the whole thing. You might have been able to. I think maybe a frame-perfect dodge roll. I don't know. That was avoidable. This was... That lightning spear from the dragon attack, that's undodgeable. You have to, If you roll it, if you're nearby, you still get hit. You have to have been out of the way to begin with. The lightning attacks that were coming out of him when he was on foot, those were theoretically dodgeable, but so many of those attacks were pretty much on reaction dodging because of the timing being different. It's like... I got lucky a lot of times, other times I just cheesed it because there's 28 frames of inv invincibility, so I rolled like a quarter second in advance because I can't react to it because, once again, negative edge rolling. This is the last episode, so I'm gonna just get it out there. This is it until the DLC stuff, presumably, if I'm doing that. But yes, that's... <sighs> I will not stop complaining about negative edge rolling because negative edge rolling is completely nonsensical. Especially when you're dealing... I mean, okay, it's fine if you're dealing with things that are slow enough that they're telegraphed and they're consistent enough that it's telegraphed. That boss wasn't. I guessed a lot of the time in that last run in order to get it. And the times I didn't guess, I got hit a lot. I just happened to have enough defense and enough health to survive it, but yeah. Seriously, that was just bullshit. Mostly the bullshit, though, was the spear on the dragon attack with the lightning. Like, any other spear attack is dodgeable, but the spear with lightning is... You have to basically run under the body. That's your only hope. As for the stuff on foot, it's like... You have to guess half the time, it felt like. I don't know, maybe if I fought it 20 more... Ooh, nice lab. Maybe if I fought it 20 more times, maybe I would have been able to get enough to... Enough knowledge to be able to completely understand all of his attacks. But that's stupid. Dark Souls has never been about trial and error, despite what a lot of people think. It's been about, like, theoretically, you should be able to beat any boss first time if you're really paying attention. And I suppose have a shield because you're going to be able to see the attacks without having to see them coming. But, you know, you should be able to dodge the attacks, theoretically. And you should be able to just read them coming. Like, you see, oh, they're about to swing. Okay, they're going to swing. They swing. And... <sighs> That worked fine in the earlier games. This one, I just do not feel like it was really a priority as much as it was in the earlier games. Despite the fact that the game was sped up and the rolling and the rolling was made more forgiving. <sighs> I'm never going to stop harping on about negative edge rolling because that's how you have to do it. If you want to have a game where the players are expected to be able to react to things, especially with variable timing, you have to let reactions actually matter and actually work. And positive edge rolling is how you do that. Otherwise, you're, you just have to guess. That's your only hope, is to guess. To guess about timing. And hope you're right. Alright, well that answers what these gates were. Or the boss arena, or the area below the boss arena. But let's not end this whole series on a low note, or at least the series pre-DLC. I know, I keep saying that. I don't know if I wanted to do DLC or not. Let's say, ending the series, the DLC thing will basically be a Season 2, or Series 2, I guess. So let's end the series on a bit of a high note. I mean, there is, of course, the standard boss procedure, standard post-boss procedure. Read the soul, see the items, figure out if any of them are cool. Probably not, because that's a spear, and this character doesn't use spears. <sighs> As a postscript addendum, I actually, after this recording, white soapstone steined my way into helping a bunch of people out with this boss. It feels like it really was meant for co-op. Mostly because the attacks don't target everybody but the person they're targeting will have a really hard time avoiding them. So, because they aren't targeting the same person over and over, you have a bit of a chance to recover from these attacks that are impossible to roll through that you have to have already been out of the way of. Alright, so, first off, the boss soul, which is right here. Soul of the Nameless King. Soul of the Nameless King, one of the Twisted Souls, steeps in strength. Used to acquire many souls or transpose to extract his true strength. The Nameless King is once a dragon-slaying god of war before he sacrificed everything to ally himself with the ancient dragons. A god of war, you say. Okay. Nameless god of war. Well, that sounds kind of like everything that was talking about Gwyn's son. And let's see if what's left of Lilith can transpose something for me, and... Oh! I don't have the faith for this, but that's actually potentially useful. Lightning Storm, Miracle of the Nameless King, allied to the ancient dragons. Calls forth furious bolts of lightning. 
Once a slayer of dragons, the former king and war god tamed a storm drake on which he led a lifetime of battle. This miracle is likely a tale of their bond. Not sure which miracle this would be. I'm guessing it's the one where he shot the spear up into the sky, lightning shot up, and then it shot down on me with a really awkward timing. And then Storm Curved Sword. Oh, that's actually three weapons. Wow. Curved Sword imbued with the strength of the Storm Drake. The Nameless King, ally of the Ancient Dragons, fought beside the Storm Drake in countless battles. When the Great Beast fell, the King claimed his soul, as was the custom in the Age of the Gods. Skill is Tornado. You imbue the blade with the Wrath of a Storm in spinning motion and follow with a strong attack to bear that wrath upon foes. Which would be the thing that they did, where it was swing and then a big wall of wind comes at me. That would be the thing, I'm guessing. Last one, Dragon Slayer Sword Spear, the dragon hunting weapon from the Age of the Gods, this earliest form of the cross spear, serving as both sword and spear. Its owner was the Nameless King and Deific Hunter of Dragons. The sword spear was imbued with lightning, of which he was the heir. Skill is Falling Bolt, holds sword spear high in the air to summon fierce lightning that descends upon distant foes. So, I don't really care about grabbing any of those. Curved sword, spear, meh. The miracle's kind of neat, but my faith is pretty much capped at 30. This character isn't going to level past 120. And there aren't enough faith... I don't know if there's any faith increasing... There are faith increasing rings, aren't there? Like a priest's ring or something? I thought there was. Well, maybe not. Also, this is the thing I was talking about. Ring of the Sun's Firstborn mentions the son of Gwyn was once a god of war, and then they were stripped of their stature as punishment for foolishness. I'm guessing the foolishness was allying with the dragons. That seems to be the thing. So yeah, and then the name is gone. So yeah, that's the thing. That was more than likely Gwyn's firstborn son. All the descriptions line up with the Ring of the Sun's Firstborn. And... Yeah, I guess that's... Kind of a Dark Souls 1 reference, but in a sense, not really, because it's kind of a Dark Souls 1 closure. You get closure on who who was Gwyn's firstborn? Who was the son's firstborn? The Nameless King. So you don't actually know what their name is, but you know that they rode dragons. Alright, so that is it. Totally it. Last episode was kind of the finale, but this one's just it, it, done. Like, thank you for watching. And now, it's over. And Irina will probably not be played for a little while. Because, well, we've kind of done everything. That, that, that's it. I mean, it, that's everything. I, I, don't, I don't really know what to, what to say. So, yeah. Yay. So yeah, thanks for watching, those of you who watched the whole series, and have a good night.